How you guys doing? This is Andrew from Flory PB. Hope you had a good holiday. Hope you have a good new year. Hope this year goes better for everybody as is. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Well, not that much different, but um, I promised you guys a little bit ago that I would do a series on every angel. We did LEDs and we we're going to do LCDs next. Then I realized to myself that I don't actually have an LCD built that's uh, a stock LCD. That's not to have something weird in it like a custom board or something like that. So I figured... Let me restore an LCD project that I've had sitting here, and we'll restore it first, and then I'll do the series on the LCDs after it's restored, after this one's back to factory condition from where it is. Uh, this is a Warp Sports LCD. This is, I believe, the last model they made, so around mid to late 2002, early 2003 was the time period these came out. And um, yeah, it's missing some parts. It's got some newer parts on it. We're going to take these off, we're going to disassemble it today, we're going to clean it up then, and then we're going to build this thing back as, as best as we can. We're going to show, I'm going to show you guys all my tips and tricks, how to build these. These are, are really the, the granddaddy of angels. They, they shot so well, they were so comfortable. These, these were the guns in 2000, in the year 2000, 2002. This was, this was the standard of what made the, the highest end paintball marker. So they're great markers to play with, they're great markers to tech. We'll just break down. We'll break this thing down and get into it. We're going to get rid of this barrel first. We're not going to keep this barrel on it. The reds do match pretty well. If you bring them in, this one is slightly not as dark, I guess. I don't know how to really say color like that, but it's a little bit different of a shade. But this is from a newer Angel. This is like an A4 barrel. We'll put that off the side. This is also, this volumizer is probably from an A4, that era of Angel. We're getting rid of that as well. I don't know what we're putting on that yet, per se, but I think I got some, some Warp Sports products to put on that. We're going to lose that as well. Let's use my favorite tools. Come on, baby. All right, get rid of that feed. We'll put a clamping feed on this thing. Only part that we won't keep stock is we'll put a clamping feed on it because it's just nice to do. As you can see, there's no breech pin. Huh. That's a little weird. Maybe that's a Warp Sports bolt? I don't know. I've never... I got to do a little research on this. That face design, it looks cool. I don't know if you can see that well. This looks cool, but it really does shit. This is some of that, uh, I guess, bro science is, I guess, the way to call it, that we had a ton of back then in paintball, especially. It's a neat little bolt, though. I like that it's sloped going in. They have just a white Delrin piece in there. This is just a... This is just a grub screw or a set screw that they turned down to fit in. Nice. <laughs> Not the strongest thing, but... It's a little crooked. Not great. But we'll, we'll make it work. It's a cool bolt. I'll make sure it's a standard bolt that could have came with this at the time. And uh, we'll go with it from there. has a nice little ramped entry, which is nice. If you actually blew out this front end and made it just an open face, it'd probably be a nicer bolt. All together, it'd flow even better. The funny part is this section here got turned down where the breech sits. Which, I maybe it's just because that they, they made it not to spec or maybe it walked a little bit when they were machining it but then they turned this section down you can really actually feel it it's kind of funny but it won't really affect anything so probably gonna let this bolt ride with this marker leave it off to the side for now now let's pull off the, the reg the horrible mini reg but this one is gorgeous i love the way this mini reg looks the one they did with with this particular marker it's just a really nice looking mini reg but still a mini reg they aren't very good but We'll rebuild her, build her as best as we can. Get a little snap ring pliers in there. Yep, you don't want to come out. Can I get you out? Not yet. Let's get our metric keys. We're using a two and a half, or maybe not. 
I think it's the three. Now we got a ball the tent that sometimes falls out in there and a carrier. Nothing different. The stack looks a little messed up. We'll uh, go through that as we go. Ooh, that might have been too tight for you guys. Sorry about that. There we go. So we got our ball bearing. Got the carrier for the seal on the bottom. Got the piston with the cap with the capture, not the not capture, the dynamic O-ring on it, which is not an ideal way to do it. Very tiny pistons in these. I'll keep harping on that as we go always. Not great regs. The gun deserved a better reg than that, but it's the weirdest thing why they never really changed this in all those years. But whatever. The board looks surprisingly okay. We'll have to get a battery in this. There's no battery in this right now at all, so. Keep with the three millimeter. The solenoids unplugged. There's no battery wires. There's no in Intelli feed or anything up top, so we're not worried about any of that stuff. This frame is probably going. I think I have a red frame that I can salvage off a parts marker, which is I don't know. It's a little weird thing. Angels. Well, that's a hmm. All right. Some grody milling on top of that frame. I don't know when this one came from, but wow, look at that. <laughs> Almost looks like tree bark. Let's see if I can get a, that zoomed in for you. If you can see that finish. Hope you can see that. That's that's actually you can feel that. That's a I haven't felt that before on an angel. That's weird. But the board has Allen screws in it, so someone's been messing with it. I think these are two and a half or two. Keep guessing. We'll see if we can salvage this at a later date. We'll try to load up the old uh, hardware and put the, the sexy Angel software in it. So it has firing modes and stuff. Not for any particular reason, just because it's kind of cool to have a neat old marker like that that shoots the way it was intended to shoot. That one hit the floor. We'll get that sooner or later. So next, let's pull off the rest of the stuff on the bottom. Going back to the 3mm, take off the back side of the flash tank. We'll switch to a 4mm Allen to take off the center bolt in the flash tank. And take off the VASA. You should notice that bolt's a little shorter than these two. Which this back bolt's supposed to be shorter than the front bolt. We'll get that all situated as we go. Take my little wrench. looks crazy there that was a little chewed up but nothing bad we'll separate all this stuff all right that o-ring looks not too bad we'll replace them all as we go anyway no point leaving them here, but get those off to the side. Clean my stuff up a little bit. You always build so much crap on your desk when you're doing this. Well, that's nice. The pins are, uh, they want to come out almost, so it's not all rusted up in there. 
pull the other front plug, make sure there isn't a battery in there that's uh, just been ripped out. Nope, that's clean. There goes the pin for the hammer. We'll pull up the back two screws here. We use the two millimeter Allen wrench. Pull up the two little screws for the back plate. Now normally there's a spring in this side to hold in the pin that's supposed to be here, but they're both gone right now. So we gotta replace those. Not a big deal. Back plate comes out. Nothing crazy. Let's keep using that two millimeter. Pop the two screws for the top rail. Now these screws get slightly shorter in the uh, the newer generation Angels. I know some universal kits sell the screws, sell, sell a universal kit for IR3s and LCDs. Those screws are a tiny bit shorter than the IR3s. I think they just provide the shorter screws because they don't really do much. So you don't need all that length to get out of these. But, you know, if you want to keep it completely original, you want to use the longer screw there. Two and a half millimeter. I should grab my hammer tool for this, but this works pretty effectively too. Let this come out. What the hell is that spring? That shouldn't be there. I'm going to gently let the wires feed up into the body. Then we want to grab them from the back. Where you see them come out of here. You're going to gently feed them out. We don't want the tug on anything. We don't want to ruin the, the end connection. Pull the solenoid out. There's some crap on it. Looks okay. Might have to break this open and re-lube it. We'll do that in a, a later thing. That's why I break this down real quick for tonight. Let's get the hammer next. I'm going to... The snap ring's never been played with from the factory. That's what that little red tape is there. We're probably going to end up playing with it. We're going to rebuild this ram all together. I like doing it on these older ones. You can, and it's, it makes it nicer if you do. I'll show you the O-rings we put in and all that stuff as we go. I'm going to turn around real quick and grab my actual removal tool. Oh, that's in there. All right, Ram's definitely been played with before. We'll open it up soon and see what's going on. Hmm. Now let's take our front tube stuff here. We're gonna start with the LPR. Gonna pull this pin. Which is also not rusty. At least this marker is not rusty. That's that's a beautiful thing. It might be missing pieces, but there's no rust. There's nothing jammed in there. There's no screws that look all rusted out or stripped out, which is beautiful. That's that's the way to do it. Get my LPR tool. LPR removal tool, I should say. Oh, this is an M3 bolt. I don't remember the thread pitch. I'll look that up. But it's just a little M3 bolt. You can just get an M3 bolt and do this as well. Screw it into the LPR, the piston. Hope everything comes out with it. It didn't. Couple shims. Put this together for now. Nothing crazy. We're going to polish this LPR up and uh, get it running real nice as well. I'm going to try to do the full rebuild on the bench here. I'm going to try to do all my little polishing, every weird thing I do on the bench so you guys can see it all. That 
That's been played with as well. This mark has been rebuilt. I mean, it had some love in it before, which is a nice thing. You get an Allen and Gently coming here. It's not working. We'll get the, the swab. Cup seal looks okay. As a stainless valve, I don't mind doing it. I just wouldn't touch the front face too much. That's your seal. Anything else, it's stainless. It's not really going to damage anything. Especially if you're gentle with it like that. And the mark is broken down for what it's worth. I'm going to clean it up. I'll make a new video coming up with that. We're going to put it all together in one big video. Go through this whole thing. i got to source a couple parts from my, my spares. So I'm going to start doing that. And uh, we'll continue with this in a little bit. All right, guys, we're back. Right now what we're doing is this big thing you see here in the parts of the screen that you see. This is an ultrasonic cleaner that, that we use here. Uh, it's just an eBay thing. It's uh, I wish I had a, another camera to show you the front of this thing. It's just a big stainless steel box. It kind of looks like um like, like a deep fryer, deep fryer that's been converted into an ultrasonic cleaner. It's made by Bring New International. No idea if that company is good or not has a little bit of a heating function and it does the ultrasonic cleaning. It's been great. I think that this big one costs about 200 bucks and it's just been a great thing to have around. So the next step, what we normally do is all this grody stuff that you see in the, in the marker, everything like that, we're going to cover it with a little bit of Dawn. Yeah, you can see that. Cover it with a little bit of Dawn and then we're going to put in the ultrasonic cleaner and let it run. I just use Dawn, it doesn't really corrode the metal, it's a light abrasive, it's not something that's going to do anything crazy, if there's anything really stuck on it's not coming off with that, but it cleans off most just the general gook you get from paintball. As you can see I found a red frame in the, the parts box, um, we're using a CCM feed neck we're going to end up using. So I got a little black with the feed neck and some silver. So I'm going to go with a silver trigger. I might use this, this chain trigger. I might try to find a more traditional one to put on it. Up in the air with that doesn't exactly matter. That part doesn't need cleaning. The CP or the CCM part doesn't need cleaning. Oh, what else have we found? We found two Warp Sports volumizers in the matching red color. We're going to use these instead. One of them going to do a little bit because it's going to be on the LPR. The other one's not going to do a thing because it's on the, the battery tube. Just there for style and looks. We'll give them a cleaning too. After that, we got a breech pin we're going to use or a pull pin. I got a Warp Sports pull knob we're going to put on that one in black to match the black on the CCM part. Nice set of black grips to go with that. It's going to tie in the black a little bit. The silver gets tied in, the black gets tied in a little bit better that way. Then the piece to really do this, see if you can see that there. We're going to put a nice old school CP style Warp Sports barrel kit with it. Warp Sports Barrel Kit. These are essentially just a CP Barrel Kit. We have a 689, a 685, and a 693 backs to put with this thing, which is going to be nice. Just as CP fronts, the color does match pretty well. It's a nice old school traditional kit that, that's in this marker's error in the generation of this particular one. So that'll look pretty good on there. And that's going to help, help tie in the silver of the trigger, the silver of the feed neck. It's going to make everything hopefully look well together. Just look like something we coordinated and tried to do. It wasn't just thrown together with a bunch of random parts we had. So we're going to take everything we're going to put in the cleaner. 
the valve body, this really doesn't have to get cleaned. It's a little dirty back here, so I'll throw it in, why not? The cup seal itself, this one looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it in oil. These Angel Cup Seals do like oil. If you don't put oil on them, they, they tend to go bad. Fairly easy. In comparison to some other cup seals from other markers. Yeah, and outside of that, we also... I'm going to replace the little buttons with just some stainless steel ones that I have a, a bunch of. It's going to be hard to see. I'll bring it a little closer to the camera. These don't particularly do anything at all, but I have a lot of them. They look, at, they look kind of nice. They're going to tie into the silver theme a little better than the uh, red, orange, and green one do. And we'll just go from there. So... Let's take our reg pistons. These are in pretty good shape, both of the reg pistons, so I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm not going to bother putting them in the cleaner. I'm just going to wipe them off and we're going to polish them up as we go. But the body itself, the frame, the VASA, the flash tank. Pull the O rings out. Put those off to the side. Spring can go over there too, doesn't need to go in there. The front plug we're not exactly using right now, but we're going to include it with this thing. I'll do the body of the, the regulator. The LPR body is in good shape. We're not going to bother doing that. We're just going to swab it out a little bit and go from there. Back cap. Just a little crud on that. We'll do that as well. Uh, the bolt's fine. doesn't need to get done. Yeah, so here's our parts that we're going to put in the cleaner. So we're going to get some Dawn. Easy enough. Let's get them soaked up, ready to go. Give them a little pre-soap. Try to get your finger in all the little crevices like this. The cleaner is going to work pretty well. Help get any of the, the weird crud or stuff out of the, the deep, deep areas. It's hard to get things out of. And we've had this cleaner sitting here a little bit. It's up to 37 degrees Celsius. I don't exactly know what that is. Uh, I think 100 degrees is boiling. Zero degrees is uh, freezing. So, it's a little warm, nothing crazy. It can go up to 60 degrees Celsius, but it takes a long time to get up there. Just get a little... Clean that out real nice, hopefully. The trigger frame, that's been sitting at the bottom of a of a bin, so this needs a little bit of cleaning. The top on this one's machined so much nicer than the top on the other one that was on this market originally. I don't exactly know what happened with that one. That's a little strange. But it doesn't really affect anything either way. Gonna make sure the button area is gonna get nice and clean. Gonna dig our finger in there a little bit. And then yeah, We'll clean up the body. One thing you always got to watch out for is these jewels. You got to make sure that they uh, they don't come off. If they come off, we got to glue them back on, which isn't the end of the world. We just got to remember to look in the cleaner and find them if they if they fell off. Up here always gets kind of grody if people get shot in it. This mark is in pretty good shape, but we're still going to do this to it. Because it's not going to hurt anything for it.
just one more step in ensuring that everything's going to come out nice and clean and we're starting with something that's going to work pretty well. On earth. Oh, the plug. <laughs> the plug in the back somehow slipped forward. Let's get something there to... Not, not long enough. Squeeze you to the rescue. <laughs> That's a weird one. But no harm, no foul. There's that plug that goes in the back behind the breech. Just a Dowron plug. I'll get that cleaned up too. Right, things all soaked up. I'm gonna grab a rag real quick and wipe my hands. All right, so move these out of the way real, right now. This little basket that comes with the cleaner. I put a little bit of mesh, just some screen. This is a plastic screen though. And that works pretty well, keeping any of the small shit if you have like, uh, Tiny bits that you want to put in here as well. It, it's very nice for that. This down plug might float, but we'll see. I don't think the stuff actually vibrates in here that much, but I still like to space everything out just so metal's not clanking on metal. Can we do that better? I think we can. Do that like that. Pretty good. So just that, so it's not touching. All right. And the last thing we'll do is I just soap up the grips a little bit, even though these are kind of a nice set. It's amazing how much grime this thing can get off a set of grips. Gonna do that. These are always gonna float. Just gonna set them in like that. I did. They sank right now. Put the top on. The cleaner set for 40 minutes, and uh, we'll come back after that and pull these out. You can hear a weird noise come on when this goes on. All right. See you guys in a little bit. All right. So the ultra light cleaner just did its thing. We waited 40 minutes, and now we're just going to take the stuff out, wipe it off, and uh, put a little oil on some of the parts that are, are made of steel, just so they don't rust up as they, they sit waiting for the next portion of this rebuild. I unplug this thing before I uh, take stuff out of it, just because I don't exactly trust it all that much. It is a cheap thing from China. I don't want to get a nice little shock when I pick this stuff up out of the water. So it all looks pretty good. It's always kind of warm when it comes out. But that did pretty well.
Hmm. One thing you guys gotta think, is that everything? Looks like everything. After I turned the camera off, I had to put two more pieces in the water. Just because I forgot to do them. The ball detent I forgot to throw in the water. And the HPR I forgot to throw in the water. But they're in the water now. Now I'm just gonna wipe everything off. Then I'll put a little dab of oil on all the, the actual steel parts that need to, to not have the water sitting on them so they don't rust up. This is all aluminum. This should be fine. There's always one set screw left over in these, right up there. That is a little steel set screw. Let's put a little dab of oil on there. I'm going to leave this upside down to let anything else drain out of it as it goes. The ball of the tent was a little seized up. It's moving real nice now. Put the tiniest dab of oil in there. We're going to have to let it run out. Just try to help that spring. I love sprung ball detents. I, I hate the little rubber nubbin style. I just don't think it's, it's right that you have something that doesn't need to be a consumable product making it consumable like that. It's kind of stupid. If you ask me, but always like that style of ball detent, the, the sprung ball detent. I think it works great. And it's very long lasting. We're going to put a little lube on this C clip. Sorry about that, guys. The camera just cut out. Um, I don't exactly know where it cut out, but what we did was we wiped off our HPR. We put a little dab of oil on the set screw that's sitting in the side up here. This top hole is just a hole. This has a little set screw in it. And the bottom screws are already been taken out of the thing. This is stainless. This doesn't matter if we have a little water on it or not. Put a little lube in it though just to do it. Put that upside down. Then I wiped off the ball detent. And I put a tiny dab of oil there to try to help the spring inside of it. This detent is uh, doing pretty well now. I love those style detents. That's kind of what I was talking about. Then we took the back cap, and there's a tiny little C-clip on this back cap to retain the uh, the actual the on-off buttons holder. We put a little oil on that and what rubbed it in. There's a little water on the ground there. Let's uh, dry that off. Then we're just wiping off the grips. It's always nice to put the grips in there. They come out looking brand new. Put them off to the side. The valve, the back of the valve is kind of grody looking. That got cleaned off nicely. This valve is stainless. It's a stainless steel body on it. So you don't exactly need to put any oil on this right now. Just let it dry naturally. I'll put the seal up. I don't want to put the uh, the actual cup seal portion on anything ever. The body plug, or the breech plug, or rather, whatever you want to call it. Piece of dowering, nothing crazy there. I always like to press on the jewels a little bit just to make sure they're still in place. Sometimes the glue starts coming loose because of the ultrasonic cleaning. So I just like to press on them a little bit, make sure they're still in place. If not, we have to glue them back on. But they look pretty good. <laughs> Put that upside down like that. Let anything drain out that's in there. That one's on there pretty well also. The vertical ASA. This pin here that sits in the ASA or the, v, the VASA. We're going to put a little dab of lube on that as well. I 
There's the flash tank plate. Just an aluminum piece, nothing in there. Wipe it off, let it dry off. And the big piece, the body, look at all this gunk we're getting out of there. Didn't look that dirty, but you'd be surprised how dirty this shit sits. How dirty this stuff gets. There's that critical little O-ring that seals your breach, ish. Does its best job. And most of the body is just aluminum. There's a couple plugs. The jewel looks pretty nice, actually. That's kind of nice. It got a little cleaned off. Sparkling a little better. So once we do the body like that, the two breech retaining rods, these are steel. So you definitely want to get a little oil in there. Help trans help, help offset that water that went on there. We'll wipe that off a little bit. Just enough to put a little sheen on it so it doesn't rust up. After that, we have this plug down here. It's just a steel grub screw. In the front, we got the center plug. And we have the actual, not plug, but set screw to put tension on our breech rod. So put two little dabs of oil on there. The back, same thing. We got our center plug and our breech rod set screw. And that should be pretty much good to go. Dry it off. I'm gonna leave this upside down. We're gonna let these just air dry overnight. Leave it upside down so if any water got stuck in the center passage, hopefully it leaks out. It's because the solenoid holes are up here. We're gonna blow it out fully with just a little compressed air as we go. But um, the next portion of this, when we get back to this tomorrow, is we're gonna start breaking down the ram. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna start polishing a couple things up and doing all the little prep work to make a, a really, really nice rebuild. Do a, do you know, go over the top. Do something better than the normal setup. I show you the O-rings. I show you some of the tricks that we do with this, and that's gonna be the, the next part you're gonna see in this video. But good night for right now. All right, guys, we're back now. We got, the pop, we got the buffing wheel up on top of the bench. This is the first time I've ever done this on the bench with this, so I put down this garbage bag to try to help contain some of the uh, some of the dust and polishing compound spit off so I don't ruin everything in this area. It's not ideal, but we're not doing a whole lot of heavy polishing with this. Uh, we broke the ram free, which was a pain in the ass. Whoever put this ram back together really liked using their Loctite. Even the hammers locked tight together really hard. So that took a lot more work and effort than I wanted it to take. Let's see if you can see those threads. You see how much Loctite is in all this crap. And that's not even the bad one. The front cap, I kind of ruined getting it off. And it sucks that it had to happen that way. Just because someone really hammered down the Loctite when they put this in. And it's kind of crappy because I don't see any need to actually Loctite this stuff, this stuff particularly. It doesn't really go anywhere. The chance of this unthreading just from the force is, is extremely low at this point. There's not a whole lot, and the hammer actually connects, the hammer hits something every time it goes back. Let me zoom out so you can see everything. But the hammer strikes something every time it goes forward, so you don't get a whole lot of uh, twisting coming out of that. It's not like momentum building and making it fall off. So I don't really see why you need all this Loctite, but someone put it on. We're going to have to replace this front cap. I can fix this and reuse it later, but as of now, we'll just take it off. And I always like these seals. These are great. These are U-cup seals. We just got to make sure the back's clean. This one's a little grody. 
But I love these particular seals on the front of these rams. That's like the best seal you can use for this particular application. Just the cup, no problem there. Ram shaft. We're gonna polish up this ram shaft as one of the parts that we polish. Just because we're gonna make it act a little smoother that way. I'm not going to make it bright colorful. I just want it to be as smooth as we can make it. It just makes a better action. But first, let's clean all the crap off of it. And now everything that's not part of the polishing, I'm going to get off the bench. I'm going to get it away from everything just because I don't want to even risk having polishing compound touch it. And what it is, after we polish, we're going to immediately wipe everything down really well with uh, the denatured alcohol just because we want to get as much of that polishing wax, that minute amount of wax that gets left on it, off because that's a, a it's an aggregate. It's aggressive. It's going to cause you to, to wear parts if you leave it on. It's great if you want something just to look shiny, but if you really need to use something, you don't want polishing compound stuck on it. And again, we're not polishing for brightness, so we're just going to go with the brown right now on a sisal wheel. One thing to remember when you're polishing, hope you can hear me over this, wear your dust mask, guys. Polishing stuff is cancerous. I apologize if my voice is muffled. some pressure you want to get a little heat built up in this I hope you guys see the difference from the uh, the side we polished, which is a significantly smoother feeling, to the unpolished side on the other side. Now we're not really going to polish the brass piece here because that doesn't actually make contact with anything. The O-ring's in it; it's not rubbing against something. But this front part of the shaft, that O-ring slides on it like that. So the smoother we make this, the less friction we have. So it just it's a tiny bit smoother. You might not even be able to feel it, but it's just nice to know you did it. So we're going to move on from this part, and the other part I like to polish all the time is I like to polish the shaft of our LPR piston, because this again slides in an O-ring. An O-ring slides on this, so I like to polish up this whole shaft section. So you hit the polisher up again. And for this one, key down the center of it so we can hold on to it better.
With the brush, you can really see the difference between the shinier section, the smoother section, and this section here. We're not polishing this section because we don't need this. The O-rings in here, this metal doesn't make contact with anything. But this section, it does. So it's nice and smooth. It's going to make for hopefully a little bit of a quicker action with the LPR. From there, we're going to polish up the pin we got because it's a little bit rusty. We're just going to get the rust off it. Nothing crazy. We're just going to knock the rust off this thing with the polisher because why not? You gotta be careful because it's very hot, but you gotta get that support on there. Yeah, for that. I don't want to get rid of that white piece. We do gotta get around it.
All right, so this is polished up now. This is one where you could probably leave the wax on it, but we're still gonna take it off when we do everything else. Made it nice and smooth, it's gonna act very well when we put it back in the marker. So from there, the next thing we're gonna polish is the trigger pin, because the trigger actually slides on this pin, but this is hard to hold, so I'm gonna use my pliers to grab hold of this for me. Alright, that was nice and easy to polish up as well. So that's it for the parts that we're going to polish right now. Now the next part, get the compound off that. I'm going to clean this up, then we're going to switch over to getting the denatured alcohol on these things. And uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Make sure you get all the polishing compound off the bench, and then we'll get the polishing compound off all the parts, and uh, go from there. Start assembling the marker. Before we fully close out on the polishing stuff, we're going to actually polish the, the hole for the pin in the trigger itself. Use my little Dremel tool, my uh, Proxon, and I just put just a cotton swab in it. I got these ones here that have this long tip on them work very nicely. Got some heat building in this thing. Yeah, that made it a lot nicer in there. I don't know if you can even tell, but uh, it's definitely smoother than it was. It was just a drilled hole at that point before. Now it definitely got rid of a lot of the, uh, the chatter and stuff you can see. It's going to be a smoother trigger operation this way. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna clean up the bench and we get to uh, assembling this thing. All right, guys, the more I looked at that uh, chain trigger with this marker, the, the least I liked it. So I switched it out again. I switched it out. I have this, a couple of these left. This is an adrenaline trigger. I don't know how it's any different than the, the stock LCD trigger, minus it's polished, but I think it's gonna look really good with the, uh, the aluminum we have or the, uh, the raw looking colors that we have under the silver. Came out of the, the box, came out right, right out of the package. They gave me like four different trigger springs, so we're gonna check which one's the lightest and probably end up using that one. Neat little trigger setup. Put it off to the side for now. But right now, let's uh, 
de-wax all of these, get all the polishing wax off all these parts to be polished up, and um, then start moving on to assembly. But we're going to use our isopropylene alcohol. I want to do this trigger first. Let's get a little bit of that on this this fresh one. Nice. See that little black you get there? That's the uh, that's the leftover wax. So the rest of the parts we're gonna do by hand, just with our rag. Pick a clean spot. You always need alcohol for this stuff. Just about wiping the stuff down very good and thoroughly. That looks nice. Just have the trigger pin left. All right. really smooth that's nice I can use a little more on that alright guys we're gonna start assembling the regulators I have with me a couple of my secret weapons I really think O-rings, if you're really doing a, a very nice setup, sorry, if you're really doing a very nice setup and you're really trying to, to gunsmith something or do something better than just replacing what's there with just newer parts of what's there, you really got to start doing your O-rings nicer. For any seal that I, it's a moving seal, I generally try to make it a X-ring. What these are is their little quad rings. They have, let me try to zoom in, let you see one. If you've never seen one before. Oh, there we are, there we are. Real close. So it's a little quad ring. And what these are best for is they reduce friction. They reduce friction when they're moving and they reduce breakaway friction. So they break away easier and they start moving easier than a standard ring would. The other way to do that is with 50 durometer O-rings. General O-rings are 70 durometer. 
but they're 50 durometer O-rings, which are a little bit softer, so they break away a little bit freer, and they also, they seal a little nicer, too, than a standard 70 durometer ring. So the reason I don't like using 50 durometer rings for moving parts is because they're also a little bit weaker. They, they degrade faster than a 70. When you use the X-ring, you, you get the best of both worlds. You get a 70 durometer O-ring, but it also has less friction in it, so it's a little bit smoother to run. So any seal that's a seal that doesn't move much or a static seal, I tend to use the 50 durometer O-rings if I can. It's going to seal up and it's going to stay, have a better seal around it, a tighter seal. And then anything that's moving, I try to make them X-rings if possible. Or I'll make them 50s if I have to. So we'll start first with the very bottom of our mini rig. Our mini rig's been cleaned out. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna dip a little bit of oil down there. Just to get it going. But I forget to bring the screw over. Of course I did. Grab the screw out of the box. So we're going to put the velocity screw in first. I believe it's two and a half. That's a three. Let's bring it all the way to start where it's going to be technically zero. Next thing going is the ball bearing. That just drops right down. Hopefully you can hear that. So now we have the actual, the carriage, the seal. This has a tiny little 006 O-ring on it, and they're, um, they're poly rings to start from the factory. I don't particularly like poly rings. They kind of dissolve into a gook through time. So because this isn't the moving part, I'm going to put this 50 durometer 006 ring on it. Sorry about that. So I'm going to use actual grease. to do these parts. You can't really see too well from where I am, so let's just do that. Make sure that gets in there. Use a blunt end of something. And push it down. So next is our actual piston. So we'll final wipe down of this before we put it back in. Now I didn't polish this one like I polished the LPR piston because it doesn't. There's no captured ring in the back. The ring is actually on here, which is kind of a shitty way to do it. It's just a cheaper way to do it. Gives you a smaller hole too going through it, which also kind of sucks. But it's just not the the best way to do that. There's a more quality way to do that when you're talking about the most expensive gun in the world at the time. It's kind of shitty that they did it this way but it is what it is. So now, these springs, these these washer type springs here, they have a particular order that they go in. It's not just every other flopped over. The first three on an LCD rag go like this. They go in cupped downwards or cupped to the left. Three of them do that. Two of them then go the opposite direction. And the last two go to the left again. I don't know exactly why they did it that way, but that's the way they ran their spring stack. Now the bottom here, all thumbs right now. The bottom here is an 006, and the top is an 012, an 012. So I'm going to do quad rings on both of these. You always got to make sure the quad ring is in place correctly. All 
All right. I'll give this a liberal amount of grease. Very liberal with our grease. We want to grease up pretty much everything that's going to slide on itself. Help it center itself and let it drop right down in there like that. So the last thing to go on is the snap ring. We should put our blow pliers. Bring it down in. Make sure it's in there. I always like to put a little grease on the outer threads and this O-ring just so they go in a little better when we get them on the gun. And bang. That is now serviced. So we'll take a little break and then we're going to come back and do the LPR, the RAM, and we'll just keep going from there. All right, guys, so next we're going to put together the LPR assembly. Now, I, I commented earlier that this isn't the one that came out of the marker, actually. This is a different one I grabbed because I commented earlier that the other one was gold, had the gold front, and had a blue back, had a blue tail on the thing. Well, I, I commented that I thought that might be that someone put a different tail in there, maybe because the uh, the actual seal on the bottom there, the, the actual seal might have been dead on the old one. But there's a problem there. I didn't want to take the chance using that one. Because if you see here, this little dent. I don't know if they did this just to be assholes or to try to make sure the threads didn't move. I'll try to show you that. There's that little dent right here. And what that is, that's not a hole drilled through it. That is just a... Basically, uh, a hammer and a chisel, or not a chisel, but a, any kind of pin, and they just hit it to deform the threads to lock this section into the back of this so it couldn't move. And my opinion is they did that because they didn't want this to move, because if this moves, your LPR is going to change velocity, or gonna, sorry, going to change uh, pressure in it, or it's going to make it so it won't be able to close at all because it's going to move too far back and it's going to be out. Or it can move in and it can just mess with your pressures too much. That's what I'm hoping they did it for. I'm hoping they didn't do it just to be, be assholes and make it so you have to replace this unit if it dies. Because these O-rings are kind of a bitch to get to in the front. And the seal, the actual seating seal on the back, that's impossible to replace technically. Because if you actually unscrew this thing, you rip up the threads. And it doesn't really go back together too well. So I'm just going to take it safe and replace it with one that I know works. One that I know is, is new old stock. I'm just going with a new one, basically. This one's out of an IR3, but it should be... It's not should be. It is the same. It's the same LPR body at that point. It's just a different color. So we have our actual piston. Our really big piston. Probably the best LPR in paintball, I'm going to say. And uh, we're going to replace the O-ring with another quad ring like we did before. These are 015s or 015s. Again, 70 durometer. And sometimes with the quad rings, you got to make sure that they didn't twist on themselves because it's very easy to make them twist. And then it doesn't seal. So sometimes you got to play with them a little bit just to force them to do what you need them to do. There we go. Now the spring stack on this is pretty simple. You put the cup going to the left when you're holding the LPR bot or the LPR piston that way. Then every one of them is reversed from each other, which is a pretty standard stack setup for any other marker. You're gonna see a stack like this with these kind of pistons or these kind of spring washers. Down the back of that, we're gonna have a couple shims. This had two shims in it before. I don't know if that's enough for too little. Um, I'm just going to wipe them off. You want the shims to be flat. You don't want these ever to be bent because it's going to lead to inconsistencies in your LPR pressure. 
which is going to lead to inconsistencies in your shot. Oh, there's a couple of them on here. All right. I don't know what the pressure is set at yet. I usually like to set it around 80. If I'm just making a, a marker that's a general, I just want to go out and shoot every time and not much to worry about, I'll set it at 80 PSI, just the value I like. You can set them, if you're trying to make it a little bit smoother, you can go down to around 70, 65 PSI, and if your LPR can get that low, and that's going to make it smoother, but you got to up your dwell to compensate for that. And if you want to make it a little more efficient, maybe you bump it up to like 90, 95, and you set your dwell a little less. And you can you can tweak it all you want, but I like to just leave it at 80. It's pretty consistent that way to me. Put a little oil on it too, just to get a nice lube inside of the actual spring stack there. Make sure we lube up the piston. Now I want to get lube on that O-ring in there, so I'm going to spin this as I bring it in. Try to break that seal, that O-ring seal, try to get past it by putting two, introducing a lateral force and a rotating force, or a lateral motion and a rotating motion. Hopefully it makes more lube get past it and grease it up. It's moving really nice. Now that O-ring in there, I would prefer to make it a quad ring as well, but it's just so hard to mess with. That I, I'm just going to leave it as is. It's just a 70 durometer O ring. This outer one's going to be another 15 and 015. I'm going to replace this with a 70 with a 50 durometer just because to help it seal a little better. It's a static ring. This doesn't move. And we don't want that pressure to escape past there. So. Mm. Put a little grease on that as well. And that unit is good and ready to go back in the marker. So we're going to put that off to the side for now and move on to the next thing. Next we're going to mess with the ram. You get the ram together the way we want it to be. I'm going to pull this little sticker off too because I didn't like the way the snap ring was, was set. We're going to check to make sure the snap ring, o ring still there and not disintegrate it. I don't know that size off the top of my head, but I think it's like a 6 or an 8. Let's try 3. Good. 3 millimeter. That's a poly ring as well. Looks like about a six. Let's double check. Well, it's a little bigger. Might be a seven. This is a very hard ring, this particular one. It's in really good shape, so we're just going to leave it as of now. It's just a snap ring feature. We'll just put it back in with a little bit of lube. And we'll adjust this when we get the ram back together. Put it in lightly there. So right, but I want to clean off this uh, this crud, all this extra Loctite that's on it. it. Really doesn't need to be there. All right. So we'll get our new front cap. Remember I said I replaced that uh, blue one that got replaced with this one. This one's brand new. I'll fix that blue one at a later time. So the first thing you got to put in is your U-cup seal. You see there's a groove on one side, the back side of it here. Hope you can see that well. There's the groove side and the other side has no groove on it. The groove side goes towards the air, wherever the air pressure is, which in this case is behind it because it's the front seal. 
So we're going to take the front of this thing, put it down. The front side or the non groove side is going to go in, but we're going to give it a little grease first. We're going to get a little grease in the, the actual U shape as well. I'm going to drop that in, the cup side up, let's wipe off the tensioner real quick, this is just a tensioning spacer basically, just puts a little pressure on there, it's nice as brass, the inside these are normally honed out pretty nicely so they are, are very smooth, very nice, put a little oil inside this. Just sip that in just like that, just like it's a top hat basically. Just put it right down. And the front's ready to go. The piston, or the actual ram, the shaft. Put a little grease and a little oil on it. Make sure that slides through real nice, real smooth, the way we want it. Now this O-ring here, we're going to replace this with another quad ring. This uh, 009 O-ring. Drop the quad ring on it like that. I'm cutting it with oil right now because angels like oil. They, they get... They use oil for almost everything. Like you don't really service them too much with without oil going forward. So if you notice, one side of this has this taper on it, the other side does not. The side without the taper goes forward. So that goes in like that. You almost hand tighten that down. We'll get a little lube on these threads too. And basically the tapered side goes back here because you got to line up these ports well because all of your air is going in through here so your actual solenoid puts air in this side and puts air on this side of this ring here and that air flows through and hits those holes and pushes it forward which is fine we're gonna give this a little bit of a tightening not too much but let me grab a couple of my wrenches Add it wrenches. Don't want to gall this up because we just made it nice. There's no reason for this thing to be hand tight, but it doesn't have to be locked tighter either. Pull off all the rings. And these are all 15s again. I'm gonna switch them out for 50s so it seals, just holds the seal a little bit better. Make sure they're all in place. A little bit of grease. A 
And just try not to get the grease in the holes that much. A little bit's good, but don't clog all the holes with grease. You don't need to. And now it's adjust. Well, first let's get the hammer back on it. The bumper. Come on, there we go. And this hammer is just a little bit tight. They're all going to vary a little bit. It's nice that it's tight. doesn't need to be locked tight, though. Almost there. Still a thread left to go. Put a little more oil on the shaft. This is just kind of standard maintenance stuff when you put oil on the shaft itself. You want to do that every five to ten cases when it's in the marker. It's operating really smooth. This is so much smoother than it used to be. Now we got to set the snap ring. We're just not going to set it fully, but we just want it to snap a little bit. We take our little Allen, go in there. Way too much. Want to hear that click? I want it to snap out a little bit. And what that snap ring does is it makes sure that there's enough pressure in here and lets the pressure build up as it's pushing pressure in before it lets it go loose. So it helps keep it more consistent because it lets the pressure build up to the pressure it wants to be, then it lets it shoot forward with more consistency. That's the whole idea behind the snap ring. And it works pretty well. These guns don't have a lot of shoot down issues ever. I know I greased these, but I've been rubbing my hands on them a lot, so let's re-grease them real quick. All right, and that's good to go. The last thing is the bolt. This back o-ring, I never really bother with as long as it looks okay, and this one does. It's It doesn't really seal against any pressure. I don't even really know why it's there. This front one we're going to replace. This again is a 15. We're gonna, so we're going to replace it with the nice uh, 50 durometer one. Hopefully it seals up a little better that way. Get some oil on it, or some grease on it. Both O rings. You don't really want grease on the seal itself, the the actual cup seal face. We don't need it there. Pair it with the spring and the LPR. And that setup's good to go too. So we can start actually putting these back in the body if we want to, which I think that should be our next step. We'll put some of the body components back together and then start putting that tube in. We're going to take our body, let's put our feed neck on. Nice. I don't want to just go a little bit hand tight. You don't really feel feed necks come out. No, what I'll do is I'll adjust the hopper in and I'll turn it this way. I'll turn it clockwise to uh, get a little more pressure on it in the feed neck threads. You don't want these threads to strip out. They are very delicate in, in the long run. So we'll start in by putting our valve in. 
Let's grab our pins. These pins look actually in good condition. We'll put our valve body in first. It goes in this tube here. So we're gonna do is we're gonna try to line it up like this. Push it down. You can always check with this first one if you're lined up and it looks kind of okay. So let's bring that down. Get something to push on it. All right, it's in there. I'm gonna take this Allen and just massage that over real quick. Make sure I'm lined up correctly. Now with these, I like to put a little grease on these because these are just steel. They're stronger that way. And uh, they do rust, and they rust in the body, and it's a pain in the ass to get them out. So I'd give them a little grease to make sure that if any moisture gets in there, they're covered and protected. It's almost in. Give them a little tap hammer. I'd use a little jeweler's hammer. Doesn't let you put a lot of force on anything. Why not wind up? Oh, I look lined up. That seems weird. All right. Let's tap that in. Now I have our LPR body. I like to do this without the LPR piston on it, just because these uh, these spacers here. These things are basically the size of the tube, so they're very easy to get bent up. And we don't want to bend those up. We want those to be as flat as possible. The shims, I should call them. Let's get some lube on the front of this. And we'll put this in the tube as well. Line it up well. This one's a little harder because it has a spring tension in it. Make sure this is greased up so it doesn't rust either. Bang. Now I'll take our shims. Just drop them in nice and flat. Make sure they're flat in there. Then we can actually put our piston in. Sometimes easier just to grab the tool. All right. Our cap goes on the front of this, theoretically. I'm not probably going to keep it there, but just put it there. These are very easy to cross thread, so make sure you're incorrectly. And bring it down. So our volumizer's on. Sadly, the devil doesn't line up, but if we really want to be anal about it, we'll take the sticker off and turn it, but eh, right now it's fine. Next, we're going to put our ram in, because we have that set up as well. Take a little ram adjuster. I'll flip our breech open. We want to see the back of the hammer in our in our space here, because we want the bolt to clip and push forward a little bit to try to help with this uh, this gap that's created from the end of the bolt to where the ball sits. Try to prevent rollback a little bit. 
See, it doesn't sound like it's clicking at all. Here a little bit. A little better than nothing. The next thing I like to do It makes too far forward now. It's weird with this this particular bolt. It's a little strange. I like that. So the next thing I like to do is I always like to shove these breeches as far forward as possible. We want to get as much tension on it so it's not this easy to flip around. This isn't good. We want it to be nice and tight. We want it to be as far forward as possible to eliminate this front gap. If there's a back gap, that doesn't matter as much, but the front gap really matters. So we need to be our standard Allen keys for this. I got two screws, one in the front and one in the back, that adjust the position of where this thing sits and the tension acting on it. So that's the kind of tension I want on this thing. Now I need to adjust the front one and let this whole apparatus move forward, the whole roto breach. Let off, check. I don't want to hit because these things are never machined perfectly, but just a little tuning tweak to get you a little extra efficiency. The front gap's pretty closed. The back gap isn't. Yeah, that one's doing pretty good. It just helps also reduce that uh, that ball roll back. <laughs> this is crazy, this bolt. like that so that's the body set up now the body set up the way I want it set up my whole ram sleeve is in we'll test it with a pressure tester when we have everything else together next we'll probably put the um, electronics in the body put the ball to 10 on right now because why not and I gotta do another little video segment I'm running out of camera space so I gotta pull this all off and uh, get more camera space together so I can make this video. It's a three millimeter. Just incorrectly. Yeah, it's good to tent. It's gonna be a good looking marker when it's done. And uh, hold on, we'll be right back with uh, more to do. Okay, and we're back and we're getting into the final stretch of this. It's almost like a three hour class that I used to teach out of college. How long this is taking, but it's all worth it in the end. Next, we're going to put together the flash tank of the VASA. Then we can put the reg back on the marker if we want to. And uh, we'll go from there. And then we'll finish up the trigger frame and get the battery installed. Get the electronics in it. And hopefully she's ready to go soon after that. So we we'll start with the flash tank here. We cleaned it from the ultrasonic cleaner. The O-ring in here is going to be an O11. And it's a 50 durometer ring we're going to use. Fits in there nice like that. So we'll get our grease out. Rev the ring. Get it in there. The other ring is going to be an 008 that goes here. 
to seal up that screw. That one's broken. Hold on a second. I don't know why that ring was broken, but factory defect, I guess. That just slides right in there like that. Now it's an O12 ring, another 50 durometer that's going to go on the top of the VASA that connects to the flash tank to seal that. Get in there. This one needs a little more. So now our pinhole in the front lines up with the pin here. The pin can be in either side really, it doesn't exactly matter. It can pull out of one, go on the other one, it, it just depends on where it lands. Now we get our screws. We got our bigger screw that goes in the middle right up the center of this thing and our smaller screw that secures the other side of the flash tank also this pin gets put into the flash tank that's that hole there so it looks pretty good we're gonna just mount it up here turn the gun over I like to put the, the small back pin it or the small back bolt in first. Then we need our number four or four millimeter Allen key for the bigger bolt. And just lightly snug that down for right now. We need our three millimeter for the smaller bolt. Gonna give that a light snug down. We don't want to torque these too much. A lot of people over tighten this stuff. Doesn't have to be that tight, guys. Just snug enough. Because I can't get my grasp on that. Get my favorite tool. Give it a light, a light snug down there. The VASA is back on. That means the mini rag can go back on if we want to. Which, why not? Give a little more lube out there. Now maybe some of you noticed this or not, I switched this with what was there originally. I didn't want to deal with trying to rebuild that one and trying to force my macro line to go straight up. So I just put a new macro line fitting on this. I'm going to have one on. This is what we're using for our ASA, just an old hybrid one. I rebuilt this, but it's not actually part of an angel, so I didn't really do it on camera. We have a fitting out of that one too, so hopefully it lines up pretty well. It should be pretty good for us. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the battery in the tube and hopefully put the back of our gun together, back of our marker together. So here's our new battery cell. We're going to slip the wires in. Make sure it all slips in. Slide that down like that. Find where the wires are and gently pull them out. Like everything, it's a little jammed.
There we go. This wire is going to go back. Just got to look through the body slot here. Try to angle it so it goes upwards. And once we see it, we'll get our little pick. Come on. We'll pick it out like that. The solid and the uh, battery's now in place. We put the solenoid in place. I'm not rebuilding it. It looks pretty good. If it's leaking, if it's stuck, we'll rebuild it as we go. We'll put a tiny drop of lube in it, or just oil. Really small drops. Right in the center inlet. Got both of those. The membrane pad looks good on the bottom. We're going to grease it up. Make sure we do it the right way. There's two pinholes that line up here. We've got to make sure that the cutouts in the membrane pad match up to those three. This one's pretty easy to put together. So this one, it's not backwards like the newer Angels. This one is straight up this way. Run the wires out the back first. Make sure our pad's nice and flat. And find the holes where it sits. Nice and tight. Another little indicator that you're doing it right is that little divot you see right on the top. That's made by the retainer clip. And make sure that's centered with the little grooves of the retainer itself. Next, get our retainer out. Slide it in that way. I think it's the number three. I could be wrong. It's two and a half. Two and a half millimeter you need for that. Again, it doesn't need to be snug down that tight, but give it a little. Now, solenoids in place. We might have to rebuild this. We'll try it first. I don't like opening solenoids if you don't have to. They're very tiny, very intricate. The seals are very small. Normally you do more damage than good if you try to open it up. Run the wires back through the body. Pick them out. All right, everything's looking pretty okay there. So now we can close up the back end. We're gonna take our pin that we polished up, give a little bit of grease on it, just to help keep it from rusting up in the future. Slide the pin in, slides in nice and smooth, good action on that. We put the spring in that was missing and we seen like a part of the screw. Get the back cap, we're going to try to get this, this right. I want inwards to be on, just my personal preference. Let's see if it lines up for us. We have a little o-ring on the back to try to help us. Yeah, we can make that work pretty well. So everything's not pinching. Make sure all the wires are in right. 
We get our two chamfered screws, our little guys. Ooh, I don't like that. This is popping off a little bit. That doesn't look right. So let's see what's going on there. I think the C clip's not working the way it should be. It's just in case the retainer not retaining it right. A little more force on that. Nice and taut now. Go through all the trouble building this marker. We don't want something like that being stuck on it. We want this thing to look nice. Just that the way we want it. Gingerly put this all back together. Make sure we're not pinching any wires. All right, that looks good. Nice and flush. I like to put this top screw in if we can. These are the two millimeter Allen screws, the countersunk screws. Once you put this top one in, again, you don't need to put a lot of force on these at all. Just enough to keep them from backing out. There is no stress, there is no hammering these feel or anything. So those two are in. Switch feels nice and positive. We're going to lift our breech up slightly to let that stick out. We're going to get our nice new Warp Sports pull knob. We want to make one more turn. We want to make this so we can turn this and move it over like that. So we can leave the rod up when we open the breech. So that goes in nice. We might switch over where the stickers are, but I'm not that anal about this right now. So the, the marker body is, is together. It's together and ready to go. Now let's put the trigger frame together, get it on the marker, turn it on and see what we got. One more thing we can do is we can put our, our top rail on, our sight rail. I'm going to leave off until we make sure the solenoid is actually working the way it's supposed to be. We don't got to pull it out because that's just two more screws to undo if it's not working right. Oop. Let this little sucker out. This guy. Very simply. Just goes in there like that. All right. So we'll take our board. Now I know this board works. I cheated a little bit. I plugged the battery into it, made sure it was working before I went ahead and did this. So I have to put the board in. Then we're gonna put the trigger on. And I messed with the trigger a little bit too, just just in the downtime. We need the buttons first before we put the board in. Our nice new stainless buttons in. Just for looks. Now we're going to sit the board in. Oop. We don't have our backing. Where'd the backing go? There it is. These boards come in a nice plastic backer, which keeps all the electronics off the aluminum. The aluminum's anodized, so it shouldn't make a current go through it. But 
and the chance that it does, the chance that you scratch it or something like that, you could fry your board. We're gonna go back to the older screws, the screws that should have been here. And they were Phillips head screws. On this board, let me get a screwdriver real quick. Lightly put the board in place. We don't really need to crank on that for any reason. Now we're going to slip in a trigger from the top. Line up the pinhole. Put the pin in. Make sure that's where I want it. We're going to take our punch, just lightly tap it down because the one side is nice and tight, the other side isn't. Make sure that doesn't go anywhere. We've got our spring that goes in the trigger like that up there. And that looks pretty good. Now we got to put the frame on the marker. Get a little hammer away. It's coming together. We have one screw that's a little bit longer. Oh, sorry, that's an LCD. Both of them are the same length. When you get to the IR3s going forward, the front screw is going to be longer than your back screw. Let's make sure that the wires aren't going to get pinched. Make sure that the spring's doing well. These are going to be our three millimeters. We'll lightly tighten these down. And that's in place. I'm going to take a quick break again. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Then we'll get the thing juiced up, charged up. We'll get our ASA on it, start running a little bit of air through it, and start diagnosing it and tuning it up, making sure it's the way we want it to be. I'll be right back. All right, we're in the home stretch now. We're gonna get the electronics hooked up. We're going to get some air in the marker. We're gonna test it out and see what happens with it right now. Then we'll make so many adjustments we need to make, and then we'll probably do a shooting video when, when it's light out, it's dark out right now. I got home a little late from work. We don't have an Intelli feed to deal with, so we have our battery plug, our solenoid plug. The top plug is an Intelli feed on the LCD board. The bottom plug is for the solenoid. We want to plug our solenoid into the solenoid port, obviously. It does say it on the board. We're not going to zoom in because I've taken enough of your time with this video if you've made it this far. So we're going to plug that in. Nice and gentle. We never want to press on the wires. Never want to get the goon hands on it. And one thing I like about this mat I'm using right here is it's an anti-static mat. It actually grounds itself onto a piece of metal. So that's one nice thing about this tech mat I'm using. Let's try to tuck these wires up nice and neat into the body. Make sure they're not interfering with our trigger. And uh, give it a shot. Oh. Safe. Board looks pretty good. I need to charge this battery. It's been sitting around a little bit, so it's a little tiny bit flat. Look at that. Mode O. I was going to show you guys, if I can get this in for you. Yeah. I was going to show you guys how to use the software on this one, but I guess I don't. I got the uh, old software to put the Sexy Angel software in this. I guess we don't have to do that because obviously it already has it. Let's see if it uh, clicks away. 
Mode O is some kind of burst mode. Safe. We're going to use these two dip switches in here, or these two buttons, I should say. Keep it zoomed in. Mode. So no Y, no Z. That's going to be auto A. B should be semi, so we're going to keep it on B. Maximum rate of fire, 10. All right. Dwell 14, that's where we want to put it right now. I want my HPR, or sorry, my LPR to be at 80 and my dwell to be at 14. That's pretty standard. It's going to give us a good shot, good consistency, and uh, just reliability. 62 degrees Fahrenheit in here. I love these boards that they did just tell us that. 14,000 cycles. No fault. All right. So there's the modes. So she's good. It's looking pretty good there. Now let me get uh I'm gonna put you guys on pause for one more second. I'm gonna get my muffler to put on this so we don't make so much noise. Ah, screw it. I'm just gonna use that barrel that we're not gonna use just so I can feel what the velocity is around. Let's plug in our, eh, you know what, call my shot here. Let's put the rail on, this isn't anything crazy, right? Probably bigger than that. These are my standard Allens, just because the bottom threads for our ASA are standard. Because only Spider was dick enough not to make them standard. Make sure they're not going through. You never want them to go through your grip and into your board, even though the board is kind of spaced out. You need a really long one to hit it. They did do pretty well with that, but you still don't want to do it. Just snug. You don't need them, you know, insanely tight. Nice. That fits pretty well. That was just a guess. Make sure those ball bearings are down so I don't put them up. I've done that once on this little, uh, this type of Empire rail. See, that one's up too high. I don't like that. The ball bearing's down. Just is what it is, I guess. So we'll put the grips on it too, just because the board's where I want it to be. I don't know if the LPR is where I want it to be yet, but the board's definitely there. The HPR is going to tune it to the HPR. We're going to tune to taste right now. We'll figure that as we go. Might cut a piece a tiny bit longer and push this back, but that's just 
tweaking. You don't exactly have to see that kind of stuff. There are the screws that I grabbed. Nice new set of stainless screws. Put our nice grips on. Of course, we put it back in the semi. Get rid of our standards before we accidentally use one. So now we're back in metric world. Need two and a half millimeters. Yep. Make sure everything's good. It was a pain in the ass to get these, uh, the three screw grips on. Tricky things, always making sure you don't cross thread these kind of things. That'd be a bitch to do at the end of a project like this, right when everything's coming together so nice. All right. These are on. We don't care about this volumizer right now. It's just the battery tube. No pressure should be in there at all. If there is. There's a huge problem. Safe. Semi. Good. Make sure that's working well. Ninja tank on there, and let's see. No sounds. Solenoid doesn't make a leak. Let's see if it fires. Hey! Feels pretty good. Let's uh, see what our LPR is at. That felt, that felt very, very nice. Just tasting it with my hand, the, uh, the pressure coming out of the barrel. But it felt rather okay. Get our gauge tool. And I hope you guys can see the gauge. We are at about 90. I'm going to try to pull the shim out. Show you guys how to do that. Assume you can see the gauge. This is going to be pretty loud. Let's try to muffle it. Good. So we're going to pop a shim out of this thing and uh, hopefully we can get it down to around 80. I'll even deal with 75, get a little bit smoother of a shot. Put in our, or our LPR removal tool. Missing one. Come in here. Won't pull too many shims, we'll just pull one and see if we can drop about 10 PSI. Of course, they're stuck together. So pull two, I'm gonna put one back in. They're not exactly perfect, the shims on how much pressure they give you when you take one in and out, but around 10 PSI is a pretty good rule. 
Put a little more lube on this. We have it out, so why not? That's great when the marker just turns on and I'm kind of ecstatic. I'm kind of ecstatic right now. <laughs> that went very well. And there we go. We're just under 80. That's where I kind of want to be. All right. So we'll put the last couple pieces on this and uh, she's good to go. We'll do a shooting video when it's light outside. Let's not rush things, right? We're, th we're this far in. About three hours in of your time. A little bit more of my time. Of course, make sure we do not cross thread these volumizers. These are some of the weaker threads we have here. I like to even take this O-ring off on the other side. It's not sealing anything. It's harder to twist it with the O-ring on. And our battery's not sitting far enough in the tube. Of course something like that has to happen right at the end, right? Alright, so I'm going to fix the battery. I'm just going to take off the back cap, slide it out a little bit, try to drag the wires in. It's probably getting caught up on the little ring back here, one of the wires. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys here longer than this. We'll put the uh, the rail on it, and then you'll see the the volume wise and everything on when it's done. Nothing crazy with these. Pick which way you want to put it. Drop it on. I always like to try to start these by hand. They are a tiny thread as well. Let's get our two millimeter out. These don't require much pressure at all. Just tighten them till they're snug. That's it. Grab the barrel we're gonna use. for the full effect it's probably the 12 inch front we have a 12, a 14, and a 10 and there we go a restored Warp Sports Dark LCD with all the warp goodies on it and CCM clamping ring just because we don't want to go back to a time before clamping feed next. That was a terrible, terrible time of paintball. There 
And yeah, I'm excited. We'll uh, get some shooting videos of her. And she's pretty much ready to rock right now. This is a, a pretty standard formula. Now if you shoot the marker off a lot and you want to start tuning it down, the next step with an Angel is I'd leave the LPR alone until you're really sure you don't want to use it. And I just drop the dwell a little bit, maybe drop it to 12, because that's going to help your efficiency. If you lower the dwell but keep the LPR the same, your efficiency is going to help a little bit. Not crazily, the other reverse is that if you raise the LPR pressure, you can lower your dwell as well because you have more force hitting, or you have more pressure going, so you're going to have more force just hitting it to go forward. So you can drop the dwell a little bit, and that can make a, cycle, a faster cycle time for your bolt, or for your, um, your valve. One thing I did, when I wasn't on camera, I forgot to put it on camera, is I glued, or I didn't even glue this, look, oh great. I put the breech o-ring in, but I didn't glue it. You want to glue in a breech o-ring, you need a breech o-ring, we'll make this the last part. Get a little denatured on it, just to, uh, isopropyl alcohol on it. Let me grab my glue. I'll take this tank off as well. Want this to be up and level. I use Loctite 411. It's good for vibrations and uh, shock. It's my preferred uh, super glue for this kind of thing. Let's just make sure it's going to come out. Yep. Just a little dab of glue. Put it in place. You want to get it on your finger, it sucks. Should have set off by now. Now you have that breech o-ring. That breech o-ring is really the only thing keeping these markers efficient. If this is not here, you're just blowing tons of air, or even more air, because you always blow a lot of air out your roto breech with these markers. But you just be blowing a ton more air out of it. But, a nice Warp Sports marker, brought it back, restored it back to basically a condition you could have seen it in the time period when it was actually a new marker. Minus the CP feed and this nice on off. Those things we didn't have back then, or not this nice, but I'm cool with that. Great marker. I like the colors. I like my choice with the trigger changing it. Those match. The black goes. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this, I know it was a little long, more like a class than uh, just a video. But if you enjoyed this, please comment, please subscribe. We're going to keep doing more of these. And uh, look for more videos to come, look for more rebuilds, look for more reviews. All right, we're out now. Okay, guys, quick update. I just pushed the battery forward, made sure all the wires got passed. Right back here, there's a little ring that's in the LCDs. I think it's in the RI3s as well, and definitely the LEDs. That just retains the battery, so it can't keep pushing backwards. So all I did was, all that happened was a couple pieces of the wire got caught on that side of it. I pushed the battery back up the tube, wiggled the wire, slid it back in correctly. I was able to get the cap on. What you'll definitely see in the future, I'll probably have some pictures of this thing. I'm going to adjust all these jewels. I'm a little anal about that. This jewel's not even perfectly in there straight. I'm going to adjust them all straight, glue them back down. That jewel in the back too. Just to make it as nice as possible. Marker that doesn't get re -anode. Doesn't exactly need it. I mean, it's an older marker. There's a little bit of scratches on it, but I think she's in pretty good condition now. She's definitely going to be a great shooter. That's a gem of a marker. I can't wait to play with this a little bit. 
and uh, I'll probably move it on to someone else sooner or later. I'll get bored with it. I got plenty more of these in, in the collection here to build, and we're going to build them all. All right, guys, we're out fully now.